What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and today it is time for a narrated Wi-Fi battle video. Um, if you did not see the first battle I had against Wave Bomber or Scott, please go check that out. I'll link it out in the description. We had a really good first match and he demanded a rematch because of the ending was basically I won through hacks in the end, but it was still a really good battle. Um, and so this is our rematch. And as you can see, I decided to lead off with my Pidgeot here just so that I could mega evolve immediately. Uh, the downside of having a rematch with someone with uh, Pokemon, like the Pokemon that I'm using, is that once I win a battle with them, typically I'm at a pretty big disadvantage because surprises like Counter Gastrodon or um, uh, my Electivire's kind of weird coverage set are much less effective when they know what moves are on them. But you know, we're gonna work around that. I'm not gonna try to use Counter too often with Gastrodon or that type of thing. Uh, he actually leads off with his Mega Metagross as I lead out with my Mega Pidgeot. And I knew he could just Ice Punch me or Meteor Mash me, but I didn't have anything that I wanted to bring in directly on that. And of course, uh, he could also set up with Rock Polish, which is actually what he ends up doing. Now, since I went for the Hurricane, um, he goes for Heat Wave there. I, I really was hoping Hurricane would confuse. But that's fine though, he goes for the Zen head, but probably expecting me to switch out to something. And instead of Meteor Mesh, which would have definitely killed. And I'm able to knock it out with the burn from the Heat Wave. Um, so that's the first little bit of hacks there. And uh, that's okay though, because now Heat Trank comes in and it actually walls this Mega Pidgeot. I don't have Hidden Power Ground on it, which is why people run Hidden Power Ground on Mega Pidgeot. I do get the confusion from the Hurricane on this attack. And he does hit himself before he puts up his Stealth Rocks. I don't have anything to get rid of Stealth Rocks on this team. So that's why I didn't really want to see those up. I was hoping he would just attack after I hit him with the Hurricane. He saw how much it did. Now here, I know that he knows that I know he can just switch into Landorus. And so I really thought he would just stay in expecting the Ice Punch. Um, that's the kind of weird back and forth mind game you play there. But it's okay because I do have a free switch in the form of Gastrodon. Uh, I would have much rather over predicted and hit the Heatran, then uh, miss out on a chance to KO the Landorus, of course. And when you're playing with Pokemon that are, I would say are a little bit harder to use than a lot of OU Pokemon, uh, you have to go ahead and make those plays, try to make those predictions there. Um, but anyways though, I'm just going to stay in on this Heatran and try to whittle it down some. If I can lower its HP a good bit, then I will be in a position to either force him to Healing Wish Latias to it, or at the very least, put him in a position where I can finish him off with a, a Sucker Punch from Zoroark or something like that. Um, Gastrodon is just a fantastic Pokemon, generally. I really need to breed a couple more of these little guys so that I have some for Mega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. This is just such a good job of taking hits. Just, It's very impressive. Uh, Keldeo comes out. I kind of expected that, so I went for Scald, hoping for yet another burn. I didn't get it. And I completely overestimated Electivire's ability to take a hit here, because he just one hit, uh, he basically gets the one hit KO there, which is unfortunate. I thought I'd be able to take that a little bit better. Uh, and here, I was hoping to scare him into thinking I was Assault Vested, but that's not going to end up mattering. Uh, I was hoping he'd switch out thinking, okay, Assault Vest or Scarf or something like that, but it didn't end up going either of those two ways. I could have just very easily gone into Talonflame. And dealt with it from there, but that's okay because now we're out with Talon Flame. And I'm just gonna go for a couple of Brave Birds. Again, I need to put as much damage on Heatran as possible. Uh, at this point, Gastrodon may be able to take it out with a Scald type attack, but it's not in for certain type damage. So I'm just going to force him into using Toxic. I don't have Roost on this particular Talon Flame, uh, so uh, there's no reason for me to just not stay in and go for. The wonderful Brave Bird attacks. Now as he goes out into Landorus, this is actually pretty good because this is another Pokemon that I need damage on. His Landorus is Scarfed and so I'm not going to be able to KO it with a Sucker Punch most likely because if he comes in and intimidates me, my Zoroark Sucker Punch won't do it. And of course I can't outspeed him with the Hidden Power Ice. So I am able to hit him with a Sucker Punch now from my Zoroark and uh, that's going to work out great because now, since I didn't have the Intimidate, I was able to do a lot of damage to it. Unfortunately, I have no attacks to touch Caldeo. I have U-Turn, Sucker Punch, um, Hidden Power, Ice, and 
uh, Dark Pulse, I believe. So, that unfortunately can't touch Caldeo, but that's okay, because his Caldeo can't do much to my Gastrodon. I just need this opportunity to recover because I need my HP as high as possible, because Gastrodon is very, very important to beat this team. He goes for Dark Pulse here, which I really, really wanted to see, because that means he now takes neutral damage from my Scald. I get the burn, but from the damage there, that would have been a 2 hit KO anyway. Um, it, I guess it does force him to attack if he wants to, because I can just recover as he gets whittled down by the burn and by the uh, life orb that he's holding. Um, so I guess that does matter in that sense, but it doesn't really matter. I guess if he had gotten a flinch, then it would have been a little bit more even. But he is unable to get that, and I am able to recover back up to basically full health after my leftovers. Nope, still misses a couple of HP. That's fine. Uh, Latias is going to come out. I know that this thing can't do much to my Gastrodon because it uses Psy Shock and I'm max physically defensive. I just went for recover there, hoping that he would use Draco Meteor. Um, but now that I see he's just spamming Psy Shock, I really could have easily switched out into Zoroark there, but I expected him to use Draco Meteor. Um, at some point. I just go for Toxic there so that he will get worn down and either be forced to Healing Wish to someone else or at, uh, I, at the very least switch out. Um, I just kept on recovering because I have Gastrodon and one of the Pokemon left at this point. So it's very important that I keep Gastrodon around. Now unfortunately for me, he does have Toxic on his Heatran and I am able to knock out the Heatran but since now I have Toxic on my Gastrodon, I can't just sit in here and play this recover game anymore. Um, Caldeo comes out and we already know that this can't do much damage, it can't 2 hit KO me basically. But with Toxic, it can definitely put me in range um, for having to deal with that. I went for Scald fishing for the burn because I didn't think Toxic would mount up in enough turns for it to matter, whereas burn would do more damage over 3 turns than Toxic over 3 turns. But I just decided to go ahead and go for Toxic because I'm not going to continue to recover here when I have Toxic on my own Gastrodon. I just said the word Toxic so many times in such a small five second period. Okay, but Gastrodon is going to go down, unfortunately, and now I have to go out into my Zoroark, and I did go for Sucker Punch, just hoping it would do something, but it doesn't really matter. Just to ensure his victory, because to be fair, I did win last time because of the hacks there. Uh, he goes out into Latias, to healing wish pass it back into Caldeo to get rid of the toxic. Uh, that was kind of, I guess, I guess he could have just stayed in and attacked. I don't know. There's no sense in risking it. I guess is what I'm saying at the end of the day. That would have definitely been the stronger play where it were, were a tournament situation. But in this situation, uh, just a friendly battle, not going to matter too much. But at the end of the day, I did enjoy the battles I had. It's just a lot of fun to use lower tier Pokemon against uh, purely OU teams, especially someone who's as experienced as Wave Bomber is. It's it's just a, a good test of a Pokemon's metal and how they're going to do against OU Pokemon. But I hope you guys enjoyed the battle video. Be sure to go check out my Battle of Hoenn coverage if you haven't already seen it. I'll be doing a little wrap up tomorrow in case you guys don't know where to get the Tyrant from. And the next thing we'll be covering is the Generation Showdown. So be sure to go to Cerebi to check out the rules for that. And I'll be doing a video set for those as well. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye now.